For architectural beauty along the coast, Pass Christian's historic scenic drive was unrivaled. Built mainly by wealthy New Orleanians in the 19th century, these homes were a refuge from the heat and pestilence of the Crescent City's brutally hot summers. The lavish homes along the water delighted residents and tourists alike for more than a century. The Port Cacher, this area right here, was totally gone. There was nothing there. The front porch was the bottom of it. There was a ceiling, but nothing else was there. This just didn't exist. The porch was gone, the floors were gone, the screens were gone, the columns were gone. This is when the front wall that was totally gone. Um, the window seats were totally gone. We had to rebuild them like the original window seat. The stairway, all the bottom part was gone. Of course, the floor was gone, but the steps, the landing, the newel post, everything was gone and it was out in the yard. So most of it, we were able to come back bring it back in, but it was hard to figure out where it went. This was easy, because <laughs> it looks like the Newell Post. Katrina's unprecedented surge laid waste to the historic street, damaging and destroying homes thought to be safe from even the most violent storms. The house dates to um, 1888, and we're fortunate not much had ever happened to it before Katrina. One house that received extensive damage from the storm was Phil and Mary Helen Schaefer's late 19th century masterpiece. The original builder of the house, we'd always thought it was a man named Frank Whitman. And when we got the piece of the house, it said, he was a master builder here, it said on some of the pieces that it was sent to Frank Whitman. So we knew for sure that this is a Whitman house. During the storm, the first floor was completely gutted. Thanks to Whitman's sturdy design, the top two floors didn't collapse and left the majority of the house's structure intact. This is a good picture of the house. You can see all the way through it. The first floor was just gone. Right here, you can see it's just propped up. There's not any main thing holding up this floor. It's a lot of weight to be standing. Whitman was such a master carpenter that the house cantilevered out without falling. Mary Helen and her husband Phil were away at the time of the storm. For a week, they had no way to find out the extent of the damage to the admired home. I kept praying, let my house be standing as we came around the corner. And when you, when you, we had to come down second and seal, and so you could see the side of the house, and it was standing. And it looked intact. <laughs> and then when I got to the front, is there's nothing. The first floor is just vacant. It's just gone. Um, so I realized I should have prayed, let my house be standing with walls. <laughs> Mary Helen's home survived the physical horror of the storm, but nearly became a casualty of the ensuing bureaucratic nightmare. We knew we had to get some professional help to keep the whole thing from falling. I found somebody in Mobile who said he would come over and, and support the house. So I went to the government officials and said, you know, I need to get this man in um, tomorrow. Um, do I need to do anything to get him passed? And they said, absolutely not. You can have no outside contractors. And I said, but my house is going to fall. And the official said, well, my house is already gone. And I said, does that mean you want me to lose mine? And he said, no outside contractors. So I, that didn't stop me because I just decided I could meet him and drive his truck in with my pass <laughs> and we could save the house. And that is what saved the house initially. Once the house was stabilized, the monumental work of rebuilding began. We decided to spend the money doing a foundation work, and we got a professional to come in and do that. And while we were working on that, a carpenter off the street came by and said, do you need help? I definitely needed help, but I didn't know. He was from Texas. I didn't know anything about him. I, he could be a serial killer, but I was desperate, so I said, I, could you fix some windows in the back? But he ended up being a master carpenter. And he took a magnifying glass, and the pictures we got, he 
redid the molding and we bought the equipment and he did it on site and he got a couple other carpenters and we just slowly were able to keep going. The home is integral to the cultural tradition of Scenic Drive and the pass, and its resurrection is a point of inspiration for the wider community. It was a loss for everybody, not just us. There were even letters to the Sun Herald, to the editor, about this particular house, that we had been generous and the previous owners had been generous in having events here, having church functions here, having charity functions here. So it was a part of their history. And one letter to the editor said they, they felt like they had lost an old friend because they didn't think we could save it. A lot of people said we couldn't save it. And as we started trying, people in the community were would come forward and people who used to live in the house would all come by and walk through and and ask us to save it. So that was, that was nice because it means something to more than just us.